I'm experimenting on the breadboard with this PT2258IC, which is a six channel volume control IC. And I have an Arduino Uno because it's controlled over I squared C. I'm using the datasheets application circuit, so that's what's on the breadboard. And the Uno is giving five volt power to the chip. It can run between five and nine volts. What this chip does is allow you to have volume control over six channels of audio where the signals can be a couple of volts. And using I squared C control, all the channels can be muted or unmuted, and their individual channels can have attenuation up to 79 dB applied, allowing you to control the volume of each channel. Otherwise, there's supposed to be minimal impact on the signal, so not much, if any, signal loss through the circuit, and a lot of separation between channels so one doesn't bleed into the other. I wanted to set up a test using a function generator to put a sine wave in, and I have a sketch where five of the six channels are set up at a fixed level of attenuation between maximum attenuation for minimum signal level, or no attenuation, so I should get out what I put in, and a few in between levels. Then the sixth channel, the sketch is ramping the level of attenuation up and down, so it's changing the volume level, creating a tremolo effect. So I should be able to see on the oscilloscope or hear on a speaker the volume going up and down when the signal is otherwise at a constant input amplitude. So using the datasheet component values, each input and output has a series 10 microcapacitor for DC blocking. And on each of the inputs and outputs to ground, they have a 100K resistor just to give a reference. And that helps keep a known signal level when there's nothing connected otherwise. To set the I squared C address, there's two address pins called code 1 and 2. So we could have up to four chips on one I squared C bus. And to control this device, I found a library on GitHub. And aside from initializing the device, I'm using one of the functions to change the attenuation so I can directly set a number between 0 and 79 dB attenuation. You can go in 1 dB steps. So looking at the block diagram of this chip in the datasheet, basically the input signal goes through a couple of potentiometers which allow the digital control of attenuation and then it has an op amp unity gain buffer it's showing and the typical input impedance is around 30k output impedance around 600 ohms so depending what kind of signal source we are using or depending what we're hooking this output back up to we may need to consider those impedances. They may interact with whatever other circuits we're connecting. So that's one reason using a signal generator with a low 50 ohm output impedance will make it easier to test with this 30K input impedance. I set up the function generator to give a one volt nominal peak to peak sine wave. And now I can look on the scope at the input, which is the blue trace, compared to the various channels on the output green trace. In the sketch, I set channel 1 to have maximum 79 dB attenuation. So basically, I should be turning the volume all the way down on channel 1. And it looks like that's what I'm getting. On channel 2, I set it for 14 dB of attenuation. And looking at the input, at the time I took a measurement, it was, on the scope, 1.18 volts, and the output was 232 millivolts. So if I plug those input and output voltages into a calculator, that lines up with the expected 14 dB attenuation. I set channel 3 to apply 6 dB attenuation, and when I took a measurement, it was an input of 1.14 volts, output 552 millivolts, which lines up with 6 dB. I set channel 4 to give 2 dB attenuation. So I took a measurement, it was 1.08 volts in, 856 millivolts out, which looks about right. And channel 5 I set for just 0 dB attenuation, so I shouldn't really see any difference in the signal. So looking on the scope, the input and output is about the same. 
And while I had everything set up, I decided to increase the frequency just to make sure there's good signal integrity across the audio range up to 20 kilohertz. And everything still looked good, so I kept going, and I even went to 1 megahertz and didn't really see much of a problem there, so at least with the test signal I was using. I didn't do a thorough experiment across different attenuation levels, but it was a good result for a fast check. And looking at channel 6, where I configured it to ramp the attenuation up and down, I can see the amplitude of the output is going from min to max over and over. So everything seems to be functioning correctly. So now I want to try it with a guitar signal and use channel 6 as a tremolo effect, just to see how it works. I'm often using these audio jack breakout boards to hook a guitar into a circuit and get the signal back out to go to an amplifier. And if I want to be able to turn the effect circuit on and off, I can use this other stomp switch breakout board I made. But then when you need to start adding a bunch of potentiometers, especially if they can't go in a breadboard because the lugs are too big, or if you've got a bunch of toggle switches or something. Since I'm working on so many things like this, I decided it was worth making a dedicated guitar effect prototyping PCB with today's sponsor, PCB Way. So this is really a big breakout board. It has a DC jack for 9 volts center negative, like a guitar effect. So you can plug it into a regular guitar effect power supply with a center negative polarity like this. Then there's a power light. And what I've got here is the stomp switch with an LED. So you can tell when you're in the effect or if you're bypassing. The top jacks are a main guitar input and a final output that would go to another effect or an amplifier. The other two jacks, they don't really wire anywhere on the board except the breakout headers. So if you wanted to be able to do a send and return to go to yet another project, you can do something like that. But otherwise, the main audio coming in will be connected through this switch. So right now it's bypassed with no light on. So the input tip and sleeve are switched directly to the output. So you're bypassing any circuit. When you turn this on, there's a three pin header here for a send and a return to a circuit with a ground. So going into this audio level breadboard project, I can plug a guitar in here, send that audio out to this volume control breadboard circuit. The output of the volume control circuit comes back in here. So when it's off, guitar goes straight to an amplifier. When it's on, guitar goes out to this volume control breadboard, comes back in, and then goes to the output to an amplifier. So that allows me to quickly get hooked up and be able to switch this part of the circuit on and off. I also have a max 1044 negative 9 volt generator here, so I can send to a breadboard a copy of the plus 9 volts I'm plugging in with, and a negative 9 volts, so I can have plus and minus 9 for op amps or something. I have three toggle switches here I can hook up on terminals. So just in case I wanted to switch modes on a circuit, I can easily use these switches that otherwise can't really go into a breadboard. And I have three potentiometers here, which again don't nicely go into a breadboard on their own. But I've got three pin headers. I can wire these up so I can have an input an output volume, and maybe some sort of control like distortion level or speed of an effect. So we can glance at the schematic for this, and then I'm going to hook this up to a guitar and to this PT2258 volume control circuit and do a guitar tremolo test. On the schematic, we have our main audio jack in and out going to that stomp switch and its LED to tell when we are bypassing the whole thing or sending audio out on this header to go to a circuit on a breadboard and come back in, sending guitar signal through circuit and back to an amplifier. 
This is the max 1044, taking the 9 volt DC jack voltage, turning it into a negative 9 volt rail, making plus and minus 9 volts available on a header to go to a breadboard project. Then we just have these standalone components, the extra set of audio jacks going to headers, three potentiometers going to headers, and three toggle switches going to headers if we want to use any of these. And because of the relatively low 30k input impedance on the volume control chip, a guitar pickup is going to have several k of output impedance, so it's not going to play nice. It's going to probably be attenuated going straight into this volume control chip. So what I'm doing is, off camera, I'm going to have the guitar plugged into some other effect, maybe applying minor distortion, but it's going to generate a buffered low impedance signal out into the volume control chip, and it will work a lot better. So if I incorporate the PT2258 volume control chip into a circuit, I'll probably have to play around with component values like those 100k pull-down resistors on the inputs and outputs, see if I need to do any op-amp buffering to help impedance match everything for better signal integrity, but otherwise everything seems to be running fine so far. <laughs> 